And you know, in, in my call to greatness, when I wrote this, put this to bed a year ago, and we sent it the drafts uh, to, uh, in special version, to all candidates. And of course, during the primaries, they didn't talk about the big crises that we were facing. It, didn't, it wasn't politically smart. And now that we're into the, the campaign, they're still not fully addressing it. But I began to change this speech, this talk that I'm giving to you that I've given across the country, called A Greatness, where the first two-thirds is a sketch. You'll love it, what it says on, on George Washington. But of, of great presidents and failed presidents. We have failed presidents. We had one that I was, I served under in his first administration. His first administration was quite good. And then he led the cover up on Watergate. He didn't know about the, the break in. But can you imagine five days later, he led the cover up. Run out of office, and by the way, I, I think that was the reason we lost in, in Vietnam. Failure, the honesty of the commander in chief. If you can't trust the commander in chief, you can't leave the nation. Why won't presidents learn this. And you know the thing about Ronald Reagan, uh, when, he, when he called me back, it's not my normal remarks, but Nixon had asked me to go into the White House after he was in trouble. My, my stepfather-in-law, big admiral, been head of the Navy, he says, if commander-in-chief calls you to duty, you do it. I said, I don't trust him. I don't believe he's telling the truth. And I didn't go. When Ronald Reagan called me, and even though I'd served under him, and I'm not involved in political campaigns, I did not know him well. I thought he was incapable of a conspiracy. You might say he was too naive in certain ways. He was too open. And he said to me, David, get everything out. There'll be no executive privilege. Get it all out. Dick Cheney up on Capitol Hill thought that was a mistake. He didn't get it. He didn't know that he gave up executive privilege, most sacred need for a president of confidentiality to regain power and trust at another, another level and go on to see the end of the Cold War. In his naivete, he had an idea that you could end the Cold War without firing a shot. And when he went into Geneva, he figured this was a man that was in trouble Gorbachev and he could waltz with him, trust but verify. And all of his policymakers thought he's sort of, you know, the Gipper's a little off base. So anyway, that's greatness. The call to greatness. Who will rise up? Now, in my the second part of this book is a, is a grand strategy because in the first part of this book, I say there's a gathering storm. It's a year ago, gathering storm hovering over the inauguration. It's going to rain on the party. And then I say, but this gathering storm is man-made, and it can be turned back by man or woman. In this book, I'm still he and in Sheen, because I didn't know whether, you know, who'd get the nomination. So in, in this situation, we talked about a grand strategist, and we took, we took Lincoln and Roosevelt as our two greatest grand strategists who could put it all together. And then as we got into the, the latter part of the campaign, they all began to talk about commander-in-chief. Neither of them has really defined what commander-in-chief is. Three o'clock in the morning, waking up. Courage, charge the light brigade had courage. The qualities of a, of a Lincoln or of a Roosevelt or of a Truman or Eisenhower as commander in chief are far more diverse than that simplification. So I changed it to commander in chief. That went over very well. I gave it to about a couple hundred people down here in Northern Virginia. And little did I know that within weeks we would be in the worst financial crisis since 1933. And that my prognostication in my book was optimistic by comparison. So you're back to a grand strategist that's got to be more. He's got to be the economist in chief as well as the military. 
It's a call to greatness. There was no reason to believe that, that Lincoln, that Lincoln, with two months, with two weeks experience in the Black Hawk War, one term in Congress railing against the Mexican War, would be the greatest commander in chief and grand strategist in our history. No fair, genius. He turned out to be a genius. Experience is also the ability to learn from circumstance, and some people with great experience don't learn from circumstance. And a grand strategist or an economic strategist must know ways and means how to get there, not just state objectives. That's true in business, true in real estate, anything else you do. Now, in my last 50 years, I have not known a time where we have so lost our strategic, our budgetary, our financial, our geopolitical freedom of action. By the way, these are my speech notes from two weeks ago. We tripled our budget deficit in one year up to $490 billion. Oops! With the bailout of AIG, uh, now we're going to set up a resolution trust fund. And I'm working with, with David Walker, who has been head of the Government Accountability Office. He's like a, was with him yesterday. I, I named him Jeremiah. Jeremiah warned the children of Israel, shape up, you're going to ship out. It did them good to ship out to Babylon. But they learned stuff and came back better off. We ship out, China's going to take over. Well, if you the night, the night's news. One of our biggest financial institutions they make may take forty nine percent control of. So we're we're it's even worse. And then we've got terrorism, and we've got the the Iraqi situation. We've got two wars at the same time, but the arc of terror is in Afghanistan, Waziristan. In Pakistan, where we got a weak government, I was with the Prime Minister not long ago, and there are weapons of mass destruction. And Al Qaeda, we took our eyes off of him, has moved from Tora Bora into the mountains of Waziristan near that famous Khyber Pass, the great crossroads of the Middle East, burrowed in, enabled by Taliban that we never cleaned out. So where's the hope? Well, if we say a nation divided, there is no hope. When I went to West Point, your first principle of strategy was unity of effort. Your second was freedom of action. If you can't be unified at home, forget it. We're going down as a great power. The next president, we proposed to meet with him, elect a few days after the inauguration, bigger shots than me, uh, David, David Walker and Norm, Norman Augustine, and a, a, a group, Republicans and Democrats, and that are more concerned about their country. We got to rise to greatness. You've got to form partnerships with Congress. You've got to get the best minds involved off the record. It can be done. And in our greatest moments, we've had our greatest leadership. We can do it, but it is a call to greatness.